Welcome to Anglin Escapades. You join me here in the River Wye in Hereford Town Centre. Got the cathedral in the background there. And we're having what I would say is an epic day. Um, this is actually, this is part of a video I'm doing. Um, a much longer length video that will be released in coming weeks. But it's a little sneak preview if you want. We've, uh, it's fair to say we've caught a few today. Than the smaller ones we've caught today, but um, yeah, it's been epic, and uh, it's been uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've done one of these vlogs because we've been busy. We've been running matches. We've had uh, a three-day festival on the river. We had a two-day pairs match on the weekend. It's been busy old times, so I haven't really had a chance to be out doing these vlogs. But I thought while I was in the middle of this now, I'd have a quick catch up on what's been happening. So. Basically, what's happened is, is the river has gone into its normal sort of autumn winter pattern where all the fish are heading that direction towards the Belmont section up, up above us here. As we speak now, as I'm sat here now, there's people up there catching great big bags of roach and dace and perch and everything that should be there is there at the moment. And as it's getting cooler, um, it's just getting better and better. We had um, we, we've had just had weeks of high rivers and um, just never seems to have dropped low enough and, and in all fairness we could have quite easily cancelled uh, some of the matches you know I thought we were going to cancel the pairs last weekend but the river just about dropped in time and the same for the festival um, and we've been for all the matches we've been fishing we've been fishing with like five and six foot plus and um, less than ideal but the fishing has still been incredible uh, in the festival we had weights up to 85 pounds of roach um, and that was on when the river was six seven you know seven foot at the end of one of the matches and they're still catching 60 and 70 pound of roach and um, it, yeah it's just there's phenomenal as normal there's a phenomenal amount of fish in the town and um, it's just been great fishing but we haven't had what I would class as a perfect river or even anything near a perfect river and uh, that's why I've cried today because I just seem to have spent weeks fishing with big floats or fi feeders or big flat floats and just trying to hold everything still and uh, now the river's finally reached something like a level um, I thought I'd come out and have a proper go see if I couldn't, uh, couldn't catch, some, uh, catch some fish on running line So I wanted to just come, all I've been doing today is just fishing a waggler and uh, feeding maggots and caught plenty. But yeah, so um, the festival, the pairs, I think that basically we have averaged 21 on both the festival and the two day pairs, right? we averaged 21 pounds per man, um, which is just, I'd say, phenomenal. Uh, winner of the festival was Hadrian Whittle. It's fifth festival title now, which is just incredible. Um, it's just the man caught some caught some bleak the first two days, and then fish. Um, last day caught some some roach. Just put in a masterful performance and uh, won the match. Uh, well, sorry, won the festival. So that's been uh, that was that. The pairs festival was won by Danny Ashington and Matt Derry. They both I think they caught about hundred. It was, I can't remember how many, how many kind, of, kind of fish they caught between them, but that was on weight and they won that. Um, but just been really good fishing, really. Um, the barbel fishing obviously has slowed a little bit, you know, we're getting a little bit of colder weather and it's not quite, not quite as active. But they've still been caught and we had one huge fish in one of our matches, Ian Hingley caught one, it was, it was 13 pounds 7 ounces, which for this area. For this river that's huge and especially for this area um, and i've heard of reports of a couple of other 13s as well so it's that time of year the bigger fish do sort of tend to tend to show up but um, i do expect it to slow now a little bit uh, i think we've got some frost coming this weekend that'll definitely slow it down doesn't make it impossible in fact while we're here i'll just uh, i'll just take the uh, water temperature yeah, the, the frost don't make it impossible for the barbel, the barbel will still feed, but what they do here, and I'm sure it's probably the same on the rest of the river and, and other rivers, 
they tend to nest up, they'll, they'll sit really tight in certain swims and um, if you're on them swims you've got a chance but it takes a lot for them to come out and actually feed and um, you know they'll happily sit in those little nests or until, it, until there might be a rise in water temperature or something like that. So that's saying 9.2 degrees for the water temperature. So it's, uh, it's cooling down and I would have thought um, with a couple of frosts on the weekend that's going to take it down even further. You know next week we could be looking at sort of 7 or 8 degrees uh, for the river. But you know that's still a, a temperature that fish, fish will feed, all fish will feed in there. Um, and like I said, the barbel might, uh, might not feed so well. My advice would be, on this, certainly on this river, if you're going to go and target barbel, I'd look for areas, obviously the deeper areas, but also silt um, and clay beds. There's a couple of, couple of areas on this river lower down, and also in the, in the town where there's got this hard clay riverbed, and uh, they like sitting on that in the winter. So if I was going targeting barbel, that's what I'd be looking for. Um, Chub sport, as you can see here, is just you know as, as the river clears out. It doesn't look like we're going to get any rain for a while now. Um, and as the river clears out, obviously the chub fishing comes into its own. And if you can find swims where they live, I mean, I'll be catching a, a fair sample of smaller fish today. But if you get out of town, some of the wilder stretches, um, some of those bigger chub get amongst those you've got some great sport and all you need is just like say simple gear you know like today just fishing waggler um, it's a 14 foot rod um, I've got came with about six pints of maggots I've probably fed four um, and to be honest as it drops down I probably wouldn't have needed to, if it was a bit lower I wouldn't have needed to feed that much it's just sheerly the fact that it is still pushing through I think the height today is what is 1.2 meters when I started so um, you know it's still sort of like four foot above summer so. Um, but when the river's up like that, you do tend to feed more, just to get that column of bait going. And, and um, but you know, through the winter, three or four pints of maggots, you find yourself on those winter shoals. You can have a great sport. Aside from that, pike fishing managed to get it from the first pike session. That's that, that's a sign of how uh, how high the river's been. I haven't been able to do pike fishing yet this winter. So I went out yesterday. I did manage to catch one, not a big one, a massive, so it was nice to get a run and get, catch a, a fish that was up at Cabalva and uh, in coming weeks the river's going to be stay low and clear, I'm going to be out targeting those uh, those pipes again. So just as the river changes different species come into, come into come to the fore if you like. Um, what else has been going on on the river? Um, We've got a lot of cormorants here this year. It's up on top. We've been seeing more, you know, like big groups of them as well. You know, maps 10, 12 cormorants all feeding, which is worrying, really. Um, we haven't had it here for a while. Um, we have had it in the past. We've had big groups of gooseanders as well, which, in all fairness, there's not, there doesn't seem to be any great numbers of gooseanders around. But cormorants, they're here and they are, you know, you'll sit there and watch them just dive down and come up with a pound roach and flip it around and down the neck it goes. So. I don't know what we can do about that in the town centre. There's no, there's no chance of them being controlled in the town centre. So we have to just try and keep stick to scare them, but that's a bit of a problem. But yeah, other than that, the river is, uh, the river seems in good nick. I've had a kingfisher feeding right by me today, which is lovely to watch. Seems to be lots of kingfishers around. Sometimes you go and have, because of the flow, you're having to let it run a long way down. And, that far down, you've got to give it an almighty strike just to set the hook. You pull out of it as well because it's actually calmed down a bit. The wind's been bad today, so that's made it even worse. You've got a big downstream wind just making it trickier, but it's calmed down. The river's full of these. Brand new fish. I don't know what way to go that way, but um, we'll have to wait for the film to see. Won't we? You might notice over my shoulder here that building there that's under development. That's the old art college 
call it, pavilion. And that's under development at the moment. It's part of this, uh, this town's fund. It's been granted to the to Hereford by the government or whoever. And they had this, uh, they did a great projection of how they were going to spend these millions of pounds all of this area along this river here. And it showed there this sort of cartoon projection of all the many activities going on on the river. And there wasn't a single angle on that picture. It just goes to show someone, or the majority of Hereford Council, completely unaware of how much revenue this river brings each year. There's people coming to fish. As we speak now, there's people fishing up Belmont stretch, they come here because they want the great roach sport or the dace or the chub. They're staying in the hotels and they're bringing revenue to this town, this city. A time of year when there's not much other tourism going on. But whoever it was who did this projection was completely unaware that fishing or didn't want fishing to appear on it. But um, someone at some state needs to answer some questions because. There's a lot of money floating around and a lot of people dipping their hand in the pot together. It seems to me like a few might have their own, uh, be feathering their own nest for it. Complete oversight of what, you know, the economy of what, what this river brings to the local economy, especially at a time of year when tourism is at a pretty, pretty low ebb. I think that'll about do me. The end of what has been an epic day. It's nice to get out and fish off a running line float, waggler, maggots. Very simple, very effective. So, if you're out in the next week or so, I say expect some frosts on the weekend. This water will be clearing out now. Water temperature's going down, so it gets harder, but fish congregate tighter. So. Whether it be the out of town winter shoals, you know, the chub and the barbel, or whether it be in Hereford Town Centre or any town centre for that matter, um, you know, they're going to be tighter. There'll be less places to catch them, but when you do catch them, you've still got a chance of, like I've had today, just some great sports. So, tight lines if you're out, and keep your eye out for this video coming out soon.